If you're about to take on Mortal Shell's The Virtuous Cycle roguelike mode called The Reverie for the first time, prepare to be happy. I'm Fuzzy Barbarian, and I'm going to show you the fastest way to become OP early on, step by step. Follow this guide and in less than an hour you'll be so damn powerful that you'll be smashing everything in your path all the way to the final boss fight. When you first enter you'll see this runic gate. There are two pages here of perks. To upgrade these you need to earn tar and glimpses when doing cycles or runs in the reverie. When you die in the reverie you don't get to keep your tar so to overcome that upgrading the retained tar perk which is on page 2 is where you need to spend your glimpses early on. Your second priority is to upgrade Improved Last Chance. You basically get two lives in Mortal Shell. When you lose your first life you get knocked out of your shell, and when you get back into your shell you have one life left. If you lose that, your entire run ends. If you upgrade Improved Last Chance, it means every time you access a pillar in the Reverie, which I'll explain in a minute, there'll be a chance that you can get your first life back. After those two upgrades are completed, I recommend upgrading Chance of Epic and Legendary Tier as your third and fourth priority upgrades, as those two will make the biggest difference to how overpowered your runs can be once you start doing multiple runs. Exit the Runic Gate, go into your character menu, and cycle across to Runic Familiarity. There are two pages here of objectives that will give you rewards upon completing them. Your priorities here are the Unlock Axitana and Unlock Eridrum Anointed Butcher Shade. The Axe Katana is the most powerful weapon in the game, it can swap between an Axe and a Dual Katanas, and when it does you become momentarily invulnerable. There's an instinct in game called Secret Technique that does damage to enemies when you swap, meaning you can become invincible and harm enemies at the same time, constantly, which is super OP, but super fun. The Anointed Butcher Shade for Aerodrome starts you off every run with plus 20 damage, which is a huge damage bonus. Eridrum has the most health and damage mitigation of all shells, which helps because there are very few healing items in the Reverie. He is weak on stamina, but there are lots of stamina perks that drop while you play that will make you soon forget about that. So with Eridrum and the Anointed Butcher Shade you get the tankiest, most damage dealing shell in the Reverie, with no real downside. Access the pillar to start a cycle. Make sure you choose Eridrum as your shell because we need to be inside his shell while we kill the Grisha five times so that we can earn the Anointed Butcher Shade. To earn the Axitana, we need to access a pillar once while carrying each of the four possible weapons, so choose the first weapon in the list, the Hallowed Sword, for this run. The current seed number you see on the bottom of your screen is a random world number. We don't want that. Instead, cycle across your menu to Settings and click on the Custom Seed panel. We're going to start in a world seed that has us near everything we need. We'll spawn near a pillar, be close to the Grisha and have access to some tar and glimpses to start upgrading the Runic Gate. The seed you want is 869148. Now just commit the 869148 seed number, go back to the new cycle tab and you'll see you have a custom seed on the bottom of the screen and it's 869148. We're now good to begin this cycle. Make sure you pick up every single item you see along the way but don't get too distracted, we're here for specific things. First up, we need to clear a few enemies to earn some tar so that we can access the first pillar which is just behind this tree. I recommend luring each enemy out one by one so you can take your time clearing them safely, but I'm deliberately going to play pretty recklessly here to show that even if you're still getting your eye in and do take a fair bit of damage, it really won't matter. We don't have to do a lot of fighting, it's only these initial enemies in this little corner of the map here and the mini boss Grisha, which I'll show you how to beat easily in a moment. So you can see the pillar sitting there waiting for us to access. The pillar is yellow because we have to pay tar to unlock it. If the pillar was glowing white it would mean it's free and you can access it without paying anything. So killing these enemies is actually helping us to earn tar so that we can access that pillar. We may not get enough tar from these initial enemies in which case we'll might have to run around a little bit just to find an enemy or two to get the initial tar but after this very first run we'll always have enough tar to access the pillar the moment we come to this area and just kill these enemies. Alright now we can safely access the pillar, watch out for the traps on the ground. Now when you try to access the pillar it tells us we can't, we need 200 tar so we didn't get enough tar from these enemies but we have 196 so we only need to kill one more enemy, might as well pick up some of these items along the way. And there's a dude just standing there, he'll be enough to get the balance of tar that we need to access that pillar. Alright now we have 218 tar and the pillar only needs 200. Accessing a pillar gives you a choice of a number of options, choose whatever you want here, we're only doing a farming run and these options won't make any difference to us whatsoever for now. You can see the runic familiarity there, unlock Axitana, 
an unlock Haddon. We're specifically interested in unlocking the Axitana, and that is the first of the four weapons that we need to access a pillar with. This is the Grisha. Now, what you don't want to do is fight the Grisha straight away, just in case the Grisha kills you. Instead, lure the Grisha over here, and then when the Grisha attacks, roll forward and away, and open this chest. This guarantees that you get what's in this chest, no matter what happens in your run. Now, instead of turning around to fight the Grisha, run to the right and go through this tunnel. This tunnel leads us to a little camp area where we're going to get a bunch of tar. There's two enemies to deal with, and also watch out for traps that you see on the ground. So there's a couple of traps there to dodge. You don't really have to kill these two enemies, but just for safety's sake, I think it's good to do so. Plus, enemies can drop glimpses and tar, so try your luck and hope that you maybe get a little bit more resources by killing these guys. The first uh, thing you can pick up is right here, which is some tar. And hidden in this little crevice here is a chest, and inside this chest is a ton of tar. Those go straight into your inventory. You won't lose bags of tar from your inventory when you uh, die in the reverie. You only lose the tar that's displayed on the bottom right of the screen. Okay, so now we go back to the Grisha. Now there is a minion in here that you want to deal with before fighting the Grisha, otherwise it can become troublesome. So what you want to do is lure the Grisha over to this side where we are now as far as you can possibly go which is around about here and once again when the Grisha does its first attack you just roll forward don't lock onto the Grisha and then run over here the, the enemy will drop down uh, it would have actually been better to walk over so that I had stamina left to kill this enemy he'll probably get me there you go don't worry if you're getting taking a few hits we still have a lot of health on our second life to deal with the Grisha. You just want to kill this enemy as a priority. Right, so now what you want to do, to defeat the Grisha easily without worrying, just wait till your Harden mechanic is up, jump in and hit the Grisha, Harden, and then roll away. And then move away from the Grisha until your Harden is back, jump in, Harden, roll away. If you just keep doing that, it's a slow process, but you will definitely easily kill the Grisha without worrying about dying. And that's the easy way to do this to be sure that you don't end up dying. If you're more comfortable with parrying the Grisha and fighting the Grisha properly, then by all means, do it how you want. But this is the surefire, easy way to beat the Grisha. Okay, you get the picture, so we'll jump to the end and kill the Grisha, doing that same strategy the whole time. You see we got the Runic Familiarity there on the Anointed Butcher Shade. Uh, we also get a new instinct from killing the Grisha, but more to the point, the instinct isn't useful because we're going to die now. But we also got 20 glimpses added to our, our glimpses inventory, which you can see on the bottom right of the screen there. Now all we want to do is run straight down to the end of here, uh, and there's a couple more glimpses for us to pick up. Basically you'd run straight through where that guy's walking and straight down to the end and then to the left. But if you want to, you can also just kill a few of the enemies in the area and see if they drop some goodies for you. These enemies, like I said earlier, they can drop bags of tar, they can drop glimpses if you're lucky. And also there are some items and some chests around the area here that may also drop you some extra tar and glimpses. So if you want to just have a bit of a practice and a bit of a play and earn some of that, uh, those materials, then by all means but it will slow you down. I'm only showing you me doing it here uh, just to show that you can, but yeah, there's not a lot here to obtain. Don't worry about opening any extra pillars. We only need to open one for this run or for each run. But had you kept running straight when I mentioned earlier that you just follow where that guy was going, you would come straight to here, turn left up here. There's a glimpse here, glimpse of hope, and there's also a chest behind this tent where you can get two glimpses from that chest. Now what you want to do is you want to let yourself die. Again, pick up any item that you see if you want it, but now you just want to let yourself die. I'll show you the straight path to here again on the next run, just so, because it was a little bit confusing then, so just to make sure that that's clear. But now all you want to do is die so that we can go back and start again. Although before I do that, I'll just run up to the ledge just in front of us here, just to show you there is the chance of getting more tar if you want it. You don't really need it, but if you go in here, just ignore all the other enemies, you can pick up tar right here. I 
now that you're back where you started, what you want to do is open your inventory and all those bags of tar and all those glimpses that you picked up during your run, you want to use them so that you can spend them at the runic gate. So just go through your inventory using every single thing you've got there that is a bag of tar or a glimpse. Then access the runic gate. Go to the second page and upgrade retain tar with all of the glimpses you have and upgrade improved last chance with all of the tar you have. Improved last chance won't benefit us until we actually start doing a, a proper run with the objective of completing the run, but retain tar is now at 17%, which means 17% of all of the tar we earn directly that's not in bags will be kept when we die next time. Now head back to the pillar to start a second run. Pick aerodrome again as your shell. For your weapon, choose the second one, the smouldering mace. Again, cycle to the settings panel and once again put in 869148 as our custom seed. Check the bottom of your screen to make sure that your current seed is 869148 and then begin the cycle again. This time I'll cut straight past fighting all of the enemies. We'll just go straight to the last enemy near the pillar at the start. Now you can see we'll have a little bit more tar in our inventory. We won't need to run away and hit that other guy and we can just access the pillar again. This time we're holding the smoldering mace. Don't worry about the uh, instincts. There's the runic familiarity. That's a second unlock towards the Axitana. And now we go and we pilfer the chests before fighting the Grisha. Once again, lure the Grisha away from that chest. Don't fight the Grisha just yet, otherwise you'll probably have the minion to deal with. So dodge the first attack and run or dodge over to the chest, open it up, and then immediately turn right and go through the tunnel here. I'll speed it up. So again, doing nothing different. If you want to avoid killing these enemies, you can. Or if you want to kill them in the hope of getting a drop from them, you can, but the purpose of coming to this spot is purely to get the chest that's behind these trees here, or vines. And don't forget the item sitting right here, that can sometimes be more tar. So I'll speed this up once again. So the same strategy, lure the Grisha over to this area, then run past the Grisha or dodge past the Grisha so that you can kill the minion. And then once the minion's dead, use the same strategy on the Grisha as before, which is to wait till you have Harden, go in with a big hit, Harden, and then dodge away. And because you already get the picture, there's no need for me to show the fight, I'll just cut straight to the end where we kill the Grisha. And that'll be the second time we've killed the Grisha. We've already accessed a pillar with the Smouldering Mace, so we don't need to use that anymore. And we only need to kill the Grisha three more times as Eridrum in order to unlock the Anointed Butcher Shade. Okay, now we're almost ready to die, but we just want to make our way back to where those glimpses are at the start of the map, picking up a few items along the way. You don't need to kill any enemies, but there are a couple of enemies along the direct path, so if you want to have a bit of luck at getting a bag of tar or another glimpse, by all means. But basically, just ignore all of them, pick up only the items you see on the ground, and follow me in a direct line up to here, turn left, and then here's... Uh, the glimpse of hope and here's the other chest with a couple more glimpses in it and now we can die so i'll say it again you can kill as many enemies around here and explore if you really want to but we're trying to do what we're doing five times so you're better off just to die come straight back to the start and not waste your time you'll have plenty of farming you can do later on when you're overpowered so again go into your inventory use all the bags of tar that you have and all the glimpses that you have and then access the runic gate. Go to the second page and upgrade retain tar and improve last chance again. Okay, so that's got us to 34% of the tar will be retained when we die and 11% chance at improved last chance when we finally start our run. So now back to the pillar and this time again, choose Eridrum. Now choose the third weapon, which is Marta's Blade. Go, go across to settings, put in the seed number of 869148. Once you've committed that and you've checked you have the right seed, the right weapon and the right shell, begin your cycle. Go and kill all the enemies in the first area, then make sure you access the pillar whilst holding Marta's blade. Once again, steal the chest behind the Grisha. Hook it to the right, go through the tunnel. 
kill the enemies on the other side, cut down the vines, access the chest. Don't forget to grab the other potential tar sitting right there. Return to the Grisha. Prioritize killing the minion. Use the same strategy on the Grisha that you did before. Do a big hit, harden, roll away. Once the Grisha dies, now that's another one knocked off. We only need to kill the Grisha two more times. Don't worry about the instincts, they're irrelevant for these runs. They're only relevant when you're doing a proper run. Run straight through the map until you get to the back where you can pick up your extra glimpse and the chest for two extra glimpses. Let yourself die. Once you die and respawn back at the start, go into your inventory, access your tar and glimpse bags in your inventory. Use them all up. Go to the runic gate. Upgrade Retain Tar. You can see we're al already at 51% and Upgrade Improved Last Chance again. Back to start another game, choose Eridrum, this time the Hammer and Chisel as the last weapon. Put in the Seed of 869148. And start the fourth and final cycle needed to get the Axatana. I won't show the hammer and chisel run, there's no need, you've seen it three times already. This is exactly the same, just do everything we've been doing but with the hammer and chisel. So let's cut straight back to, we've respawned in here, we access the runic gate, we use what we picked up to upgrade retain tar and improve last chance. But now we no longer need to use those four weapons anymore because you will have accessed the pillar with the hammer and chisel as the fourth and final task needed to earn the axatana. So this time when we start a new run, choose Eridrum, but you can also now choose the Axatana in the weapon tree. Again, go back to settings, put in 869148. And this time you can do the exact same process, only now this is the fifth and final time we need to kill the Grisha to get the anointed Butcher Shade. I'll just quickly show you when you switch between the dual katana and axe, you're invulnerable. You can see that enemy attacked me there, but because I was switching, I took no damage at all. I mean, the damage was already there. And I'll do it again now. He jumped at me, but he couldn't grab me because I was switching. And here against the Grisha, you can see just how powerful the Axatana is before we get the Anointed Butcher Shade plus 20 damage. It's insanely, uh, insanely damaging. You can absolutely destroy enemies with it. Bosses or standard enemies, it doesn't matter. It's a fantastic weapon. Okay, so that's the fifth time we've killed the Grisha. Now all we need to do is run and get those remaining glimpses and die and then spawn back at the start of the reverie. Don't forget to go and spend your tar and glimpses on retained tar and improved last chance. That puts us at 86% retained tar and probably 20% improved last chance, which is really great considering we haven't really been farming that. We were just doing what we needed to get the anointed butcher shade and the axatana. But that's good enough. Those stats are good enough now for us to start a legit run. For that, head back to the pillar, access the pillar, and again, choose Eridrum as your shell. Now below Eridrum's shell you'll see Shade. Once you click on Eridrum you'll get a choice of Shade. If you cycle to the right you'll see Anointed Butcher starts with damage plus 20 instinct. Pick the Axatana and now we don't need to do the seed number that we've been doing up to this point. We can now do a different seed for our legit run. Feel free to do any randomly generated world seed that you want. However, I can recommend one that's a good one, 449952. 449952 will put you in a world that has a lot of uh, damage increase perks spread around the place. So long as you explore the pillars and access every pillar in every region, you'll be able to get a very, very high level of damage going on top of the plus 20 that you get from your anointed butcher shade. Enough damage that you'll be able to dispatch bosses in seconds. Except for the final bosses, which are the hardest bosses, but all other bosses will go down in seconds. So now you're powerful enough to just run through the whole game, but I want to show you one thing before we check out, and that is when you get the option to pick a token. What these tokens do is they go into your inventory when you pick one, and using that token will transport you immediately to that area. However, I do not recommend using these tokens the moment you get them unless you're feeling comfortable that you can play this game without really getting any damage or stamina perks or anything like that because those tokens will immediately transfer you to another area and lock you out of the area you're in right now 
permanently. So if you haven't finished exploring a single area, you definitely do not want to use any of those tokens. Just to show you, if you have a token of ash and you come to the doorway that leads to that area, you'll find that the doorway will not have a fog wall. That's the doorway that leads to it. If you pass through there, there's no turning back. If there's a fog wall, you don't have a token. If you have a token, there's no fog wall. What I can do right now is I can walk through that because I have a token, but I wouldn't do it unless you've explored the whole area because you'll be cutting yourself out of finding instincts, which are basically cutting yourself out of finding perks or skills. And once you go through there, you'll spawn in the new area and there'll be a fog wall preventing you from ever being able to go back. So you'll have cut yourself out of all of the potential instincts or skills that you could have got from that area. So just make sure you fully explored an area before you move forward or use a token. Of course, that said, the Anointed Butcher Shade and the Axitana are just mega killing machines. This is me fighting Imrod the Unrepentant, which is the boss at the end of the Shrine of Ash area. And you can see just how quickly the, this combo melts him. And what's interesting is I didn't explore Fallgrim at all. I came directly to the Shrine of Ash for the purposes of this tutorial. So I didn't do any upgrades whatsoever in Fallgrim. I only obtained damage upgrades here in the Shrine of Ash as I worked my way through to this boss. And yet I am still absolutely melting this boss. So the Anointed Butcher Shade and the Axitana absolutely annihilate. You don't really need to do any upgrades at all. However, I still recommend doing them because the absolute hardest part of this game are the final bosses that you have to fight and the more damage you can dish out against them the more chance you'll have of completing your cycle without a problem and the last thing i'll just let you know is once you do defeat a boss you'll find there is a runic gate inside the map and you can go into your inventory and you can access all of your tar and glimpses whilst inside the reverie and then you can perform more upgrades on the runic gate here so just basically use everything you've got and access the runic gate and this is still the same run from before so after killing Grisha five times came straight here. So this is the last time we need to upgrade retain tar and this will take it to 100% and we'll have got our improved last chance up to 26%. So now when you die, you'll keep all of your tar, you won't lose anything, and you'll be able to upgrade whatever you want as you play. I do recommend upgrading Chance of Epic and Legendary Tier as your priorities, but it's up to you. You're now powerful enough that you can pretty much do what you want. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's it for this guide. I hope it helps you out. If so, throw me a like. Bye for now.